Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Saturday. Uh, <laughs> I lost today. Sunday, September 6th, 2.30 p.m. Nope, it's 2.11 now. I wanted to tell you this before I forgot again. I had always wondered about the parable of the man who prepared, I'm pretty sure it's a wedding banquet for his daughter. And when it was time for the banquet, of course, you know, with Jewish weddings, they're like at the last minute, right? And even the guests who are invited ahead of time don't know and to prepare for it. And so he sent his servants out to go tell the guests the dinner's ready. It's time to come. And they gave excuses. Well, I just got married myself. I have to tend to my bride. Another man says, oh, I just bought a herd of cattle. I've got to go check them out. And there were other excuses. Well, he had to go tell the master of the house a.k.a. Father of the Bride. They can't come. They all have things they have to tend to. So what did the Father do? He said, go out into the highways and the byways and invite anybody you can find. This is last minute salvation if you ask me. So they went out into highways and the byways, and they invited whoever they could find. Well, the wedding hall was filled, but there was one man who they came upon and found he did not have on the right clothing. He didn't get a wedding gown. And they asked him, Sir, how did you get in here without a wedding gown? The man couldn't, had nothing to say. They didn't let him give an explanation. So they threw him out where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. I believe that's how it ends. But at any rate, they threw him out. Okay, I always wondered, how come that man didn't get a wedding gown? And I was telling my friend this parable the other day, that Manny's going to be invited at the last minute by the servants of the Lord, which I believe represents first fruiters <laughs> first group to go they come back and we get people saved now I kept wondering how did someone get in without the gown they probably handed them out at the door or as they were invited which tells me this man was not even invited. He came in another way. Let me pull up that scripture. I should have thought of this, but I'm not feeling well, y'all. If you can notice, I'm hanging out in bed. All right. Let's see. Um... I'm going to put in, I am the way, the truth, and the light. It should be right above that. Oh, shoot. It's John 14, 6. i got to go to the, um, up here. Because that's just the verse. John 14. Okay. And I want NASB. Go. All right. Oh, John 14, do not let your heart be troubled. 
Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. I've been listening to Jesse Duplantis, believe it or not, three times now. It's a four-parter, 20-some minutes each, of his, his actual physical visitation to heaven for five hours. Y'all, I couldn't get enough of it. Everybody had a robe, either a robe... Uh, a gown, a white gown, and it was beautiful. And it was a gown of salvation, or, and, and uh, some of them had a robe of righteousness. The ones that didn't have either were in line by the trees leading up to the city that had the fruit and the leaves that they would take and smell. And it was explained to him that they had to learn some things. So clearly they were saved. So I don't, you know, I don't know how to explain that. Because, see, they weren't in the heavenly city yet. That gives me hope, you know. I don't believe for a minute he was lying or that God would show him wrong. But I'm going to link that. I'm going to link. There's part one, two, three, and four. And they run. You know, I could just give you one link to part one. But really, it's two, three, and four where it gets more into it. But part one sets it up. How, how when he was growing up and what he experienced growing up. And that's good, too. That sets it up. Okay, let me continue. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Okay. You know how this um, one world religion and other other denominations, the unity movement, they tell people you don't have to have a relationship with Jesus to get to heaven. You just have to believe in God. And you know that's one of the biggest lies ever told. No one comes to the Father but through me. So, that's not the verse I was wanting, but what I want to say is that man heard or overheard somebody getting invited, and he wasn't invited. I wonder why. Perhaps only Jews were invited, so they got to, because of the it was a Jewish wedding. And he snuck in another way. Through the back door. Through a back window. Somehow he got in there. But he did not come through the door. Jesus is the door as well. He is the way, the truth, and the life. I, I wondered about this. Every time I read that, I would be like, well, how did he not get a gown if he got it, you know, he got invited and he's there? It's obvious he wasn't invited. 
he didn't ex or he didn't accept at the moment. He might have said no thanks, didn't get the gown, went on his way and decided, hey, it's free food. And but I didn't get me one of them gowns. Now I'm just uh, this supposition, but he got in that house that in the parable he got in, but he didn't get in the right way. So it's just, I wanted to share with you that one thing because, I don't know, maybe you read that and wondered, how did he get in without it? I did, and I and it just went off like a light bulb, and I was just like, of course, he broke in another way. And there is a scripture that talks about a man, if you try to climb over the wall, or sneak in the back or however it's worded and try to come in another way you will be thrown out i just can't remember where and i um i could see if there's reference let's see cross references let's see but y'all get the point um correlating verses i am the truth the life no, I am the truth. It should be towards the bottom. Hmm. Well, I'm not finding it right away, and I don't want you to just sit there and watch me look. Okay, so I thought I'm just going to go ahead and share that little bit in case anybody wants to use that as an example. You can look, look up yourself, all scriptures using... I am the way and jot them down have them on a little card you when you're witnessing you can say nobody gets into heaven except through the door which is Jesus you can't get in another way you can't find a back way or through a different person or God and here's some scriptures that will prove it you know, it's just another, it's another witness tool to people who think that they can go if they just believe in God. Okay, that's what all this is about. They can't get in if they just believe in God. They have to know, not just believe in Him, but love Him. They have to love God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit can't forget Him. He's part of them. If you listen to that Jesse Duplantis video and you hear him describe how Jesus and Father would, would kind of go in and out of each other because Father was only Spirit, but Jesus was the form we could touch. And he said the holes in his feet were like that big. That He did a circle like that. And of course he wasn't doing a 666. Come on now. He was showing you the size of the hole. He said, I always thought they would be scars. But he said, no. He allowed them to heal like that. And you could see that bright and glorious light shining through them. He said, hey, he suffered greatly for us. And he was not his usual, sometimes he's goofy, funny. That's just him. That's his personality. And I know he's in the prosperity gospel people. But he talked about how 
the Lord, even while he was in heaven, he said his house was like more than enough. And he said something about how if, if a child pours a glass of Kool-Aid and he spills it, we call it waste. But God calls it prosperity. He pours and pours and pours until it's flowing down and all over the floor and everywhere. And he was serious. So maybe that's why he became like he is. And even then, this was in 2000, so even then he had a, an antebellum uh, what did he call it? Annabelle furniture, and he said the furniture in his house in heaven was was just like it, with barren claw furniture. Maybe some of y'all know about that. That sounds familiar. But certainly, it's nothing I've ever owned. Victorian. He said I was just born in the wrong century or something like that. He said I just love that stuff. And he has it in his house, and it's going to be in his mansion. He said, Lord, everything, he said, so much of this is like earth. And he said, earth is my creation. He said, of course, some of this is going to be like earth. Anyway, that's just a little something I wanted to add in. So, I hope you'll watch it, because I was just... I saw with Kathy and Dan, they played it. They said, do y'all want to watch this? And we said, yes, because she didn't have anything lined up for that night. And there was four parts, and we were like, yes, play part two, play part three, yes, play part four. We were all in agreement, you know. So that was one time, and then I watched it on my own two more times. I just had to see it again and again. I, I was just in awe of all that he said, and... And because it hel it'll help you, like me, it's helping me keep our mind on heavenly things, what we have to look forward to. And I was just sitting here asking the Lord, Lord, will we have shoes in heaven? And I was thinking, I bet we don't have shoes in heaven because the grass is perfect. He talked about his finely manicured lawn. And how he likes it. Golf course. <laughs> Trimmed along the street. He said every year I buy Kathy a new pair of clippers. And that was a joke, you know. And everybody laughed. But it, it might be true. <laughs> Surely his poor wife doesn't have to do that. I mean, if he's making all that money, he could afford a landscaper. But anyway, <laughs> back then maybe it was true. <laughs> Anyway, hey, <coughs> excuse me, I got exposed to more cigarette yesterday when I was getting my groceries out of some woman's trunk. There is a big old plume come our way and everybody smelled it. And I had witnesses, and someone said they were going to report it for me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> anyway, I better take a breathing treatment after this, so I'll, I'm going to let it go, let you go, and I'm going to find, go in my history and get the link. For the Jesse Duplantis visit to heaven. Or he calls it God encounters. Close encounters of the God kind. Because he had others in part one. That's why part one. You need to hear it also. Is close encounters of the God kind. It's amazing. He was chosen. He was chosen. His mama had a lot to do with it. So mamas. Your prayers. Are saving your children. Don't stop praying for your kids, all right? 
Okay, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, myself and my computer, and over each and every one of you, your devices, and your internet connections as well. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you maybe tomorrow. Okay, bye. I love you all. God bless each and every one of you, and I pray I see you soon in that glorious, wonderful place. Oh, I started to say, I bet we didn't have sh to wear shoes because of the grass. And even the streets will be better than me walking around these hardwood floors because I hate wearing shoes. Anyway, that's all. Bye for now. I'll talk to you later.